The review embargo is down for Dragon's Dogma 2, and we're getting our first look at what some of the earlier viewers got to say about the game. And holy shit, I'm getting really excited about this game, perhaps even more so than I was before. And I already had high expectations that this might very well be the best RPG of 2024. Although I do have to say that given the way these reviews have worked out, there is one very big concern that I think we at least need to talk about especially if you're considering buying a game that in the US costs 70 freaking dollars. Based on 52 critic reviews for PS5, 33 for PC, and 13 for Xbox Series X, it comes away with a whopping 87, 90, and 88 total for Metacritic reviews on those respective platforms. While we may all be spoiled by the reviews of games like Baldur's Gate 3, which hit a whopping 97 before dropping to 96, that game is tied for the best all time. It is an outlier. To put it in better perspective, a 90 on PC at Metacritic as it stands would put it above games like Cyberpunk 2077, Mass Effect 3, Dark Souls 3, Stardew Valley, and Diablo 2, and put it below games like Baldur's Gate 3, Witcher 3, Diablo, the original one, Bioshock Infinite, and Mass Effect 2. But just what did these reviews have to say? What was the highest review and what was the lowest review? What are our things that we can look forward to? And what's the concern? VG247 gave Dragon's Dogma 2 a perfect review, calling the game uncompromising in its opening lines. The review weaves a tale of an RPG that is damn near its own genre, which after playing the first game, I think might actually have been expected. Dragon's Dogma, that is the first one, was an RPG for ages I couldn't really come to terms with, even bouncing off of it a few times because it just felt so alien. Everything from the pawn system to the main story to the combat. It's like Monster Hunter emulated an MMO and threw an RPG story in the mix. But despite the difficulty in describing the game, VG247 also said this. Uncompromising is a pretty good way to describe it. Here's another. It's one of the best games of the last decade. VG247 goes on to review a game that is difficult, but intentional. The darkness is dark. The danger in the world is dangerous. And don't expect to be jumping around saves either, as there's a single save spot in Dragon's Dogma 2, by design. Something highlighted in this review nicely with this line. If you make a choice in a side quest that sees people turn against you or die, the game quickly autosaves. You live with it, idiot. You made the choice. There's a lot more to the review. It's a fascinating deep dive into what the game has to offer. But perhaps one of the most important takeaways is that the world feels alive. That you can go into a city and help a, as they as are being besieged by a lesser dragon. You can join with the defenders against it. And your decisions lock in. The combat and world are, are like a midpoint between Elder Scrolls and Elden Ring. Those are some really, really great contemporaries. It is seen as a worthy successor, but one welcoming of newcomers. And we all know that's not an easy line to tread in any RPG. But it's one that I'm excited to see realized, to see if Dragon's Dogma 2 can capture me the way it captured the reviewers over at VG247 because what they paint almost feels like a fantasy RPG simulation. And I'm looking forward to the danger and the darkness. But what about the lowest review? I mean, yes, we can skip past all the other perfect reviews they got. We can even skip past the really good reviews like IGN giving them an eight out of 10. What about PC Games N that gave them a 7 out of 10? Now, a 7 out of 10 being the lowest alone might show the game's quality. But in the PC Games N review, they bring up some very salient points as to why they have the score lower than others. Performance. The PC Games N article opens its review with a subheadline that might make players let out a sigh of resignation. Dragon's Dogma 2 is faithful to the divisive design ethos of its predecessor but poor PC performance and other gripes hurt the experience. Now, despite being the lowest review, it was filled with a lot of good before the bad. I was heartened to read that unlike the almost silly opening of Dragon's Dogma, the meme-worthy Dragon Heart theft cycle, Dragon's Dogma 2 begins more grounded, with palace intrigue. This sounds like a refreshing take for me because it eases the player into a world 
instead of asking them to swallow some of the more wild elements right off the bat. The review heaps some praise on the pawn system as well, something of course mentioned in other glowing reviews, but I thought their take was the most even. One of my issues with the pawn system in the first Dragon's Dogma game was how accessory they felt. And let me clarify, it's not that they weren't like key to the game, just that they felt like your accessories. Mercenaries tied to me with in-world lore of significance, but seemingly lacking in some personality. Something that has repeatedly been mentioned as not being the case in Dragon's Dogma 2. The write-up on pawns is so damn good in PC games, I'm tempted to read the whole damn thing to you. But that'd be a disservice to the article, which I've linked down below if you want all the details. So instead, here are some of the highlights. My main pawn is a solemn, soft-spoken beastron. A solid wall of fur, muscle, and plate mail that I fondly refer to as Cat Dad. He is a logistician, which means he takes care of the arduous inventory management that bogged me down back in Dark Arisen. Hired pawns still come and go, but they don't feel quite as transient as they did back in Dark Arisen, in part due to how they interact with one another. When two pawns commented on how well they worked together as a team, I felt a pang of guilt knowing that one of them was now too low level to support my party and would have to go. Conversely, I sent one pawn packing after their rambunctious personality clashed with Cat Dad. The review paints a picture of a new type of player companion relationship, one where the companions are not fully fleshed out characters like those in games like Baldur's Gate 3 or Mass Effect, but they're not hollow either, all while adding in an air of unpredictability. The glow continues from the review regarding the vocation system, their classes, and how Dragon's Dogma 2 actively pushes you to change up your vocation. That stands apart for me as, as something that makes me even more eager to see how it plays out in a sea of RPGs that push you towards builds. Perhaps Dragon's Dogma 2 can find a new formula of fluidity. So it all sounds great, right? Well, that's when we get to that, that, that big issue, that performance issue. And this line, this line from the review might actually convince some of you that maybe Dragon's Dogma 2 is worth waiting for or getting on console, perhaps. Unfortunately, I can't in good conscience recommend anyone with a mid to low budget rig buy Dragon's Dogma 2 until Capcom fixes its endemic hardware issues. The review highlights issues with frame rate drops, especially in cities, with what seemed like a stunning claim that the only person on the review team who did not have frame rate issues had an NVIDIA RTX 4090. That's a lot to swallow. The recommended specs for 30 FPS is a whopping RTX 4080. I just upgraded my PC and I'm already a bit concerned about how it's going to perform on my PC, let alone streaming it. Shit. Rock Paper Shotgun also brought up performance issues as a major point of complaint, specifically the frame rate drops in towns. In the article, they say the frame rate dropped as low as the 20s on RTX 4090s and the 4070 Ti's. That's just tough. That's that's down into the 20s in FPS on top tier video cards is rough. A great RPG that you can't play might as well be terrible after all. And that's speaking from personal experience as someone who could not play Witcher 3 for years because my PC couldn't handle it. For anyone who's planning on playing or wants to play, I've linked the Rock Paper Shotgun article as well as all the other articles down below, but that one specifically has some tips on what you can do to kind of tweak your settings a little bit to make it run a little bit better, to kind of up that frame rate just a little bit. Like, like tweaks like the fact that the low setting actually isn't the lowest setting and there's some things you need to do. But despite these concerns over performance and everything else and the fact that the first game for me was kind of a, an interesting game, but one that I never really could get deeply into. Well, I want to see how Dragon's Dogma 2 does it. Will it redefine this kind of subgenre that I don't know that any other RPG fits under? It's just like the Dragon's Dogma genre. So I'm really curious to see how it plays out and some of the things like the, the some of the things it looks like you can do look like to be absolutely incredible. And I'm really curious to see 
how the AI with the, with the pawns works out, how they, they interact with each other. We'll just have to wait and see if this is an RPG that is worth RPG of the year or even game of the year or perhaps more, but it's looking pretty damn good for the game right now. My name is Redward Flame. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day. And if you're looking forward to Dragon's Dogma 2, I hope you really enjoy it. You'll get it soon. <laughs>